We are here with a seven-figure mentor, Jess Lenovel from the Listings Lab. Jess, um, I could probably spend the entire 30 minutes just doing your introduction. <laughs> um, so, okay, so here's the short introduction. You can tell me what I'm missing. She yeah. runs an amazing coaching program. She teaches attraction-based marketing. She teaches people that are kind of newer and like using uh, marketing and doing it in an ethical way, but also at a high level. But then she also coaches these people that are growing seven-figure plus teams and solo agents that are just growing these amazing businesses. Is there anything I'm missing from that, that introduction? No, I mean, I sold real estate myself for 14 years. Um, we did hundreds of deals a year. So I, I took everything that was working then brought it into uh, mentorship programs. And uh, yeah, we basically, we teach cutting edge digital stuff that's going to get people ahead of what, what everyone else has been doing. I mean, real estate for the most part is usually five to 10 years behind. So we always want to try to, you know, get people ahead of the game. I love it. And if anyone's watching on Facebook, um, Lisa, if you want to keep an eye on the Facebook feed in case people post questions in there in our agent power huddle group, we got a couple people, Sean and Steve on with us live. So if you guys have questions and you want to jump in, I've got a long list of questions on my other monitor that I'm going to switch over to um, and just start rattling off questions. But the reason this is a different format for this, ask me anything is so you guys just have the opportunity to ask her anything. Um, Steve says he has to go stop your dogs from barking. No worries. Steve. <laughs> I, I heard that for a minute before you mute yourself out. He'll be back. All right, cool. Let me, uh, so let me start off with our first question here. Yeah. Um, this is a question from Matthew S and it's a really good question to frame up our talk. He said, what's the difference between a mentor and a coach? Mm -hmm. So I love this question. Uh, the way that I look at it is a coach is there as you're climbing the mountain they're walking behind you, cheering you on, making sure that you keep going, you keep putting one foot in front of the other. A mentor is someone who's already climbed the mountain. They have already been there, they've already done it, and basically what they're doing is they've set the foots, like that basically where, where do you put your feet? How do you climb the mountain? So that you can take an easier, faster, more effective route. I, lo I love that. Is one paid versus not paid or is that nothing to do with it? No, um, I think that a lot of people make the mistake of hiring coaches thinking that they're going to get a mentor. So I think it's a really important thing to make the differentiation between the two. Most coaching programs out there are, you know, you're going to meet with someone who's going to make sure that you make your calls every week and that's going to really make sure that you're staying motivated and staying on top of things. But they're not necessarily qualified to set the strategy, the, the like going through exactly what it's going to take to scale the business that you actually want to take. So a lot of the time, what we find is if motivation is your issue, um, but you know exactly what to do and you don't, which isn't most people, but if motivation is the, is the main issue or, and you're, or you're just looking for accountability for most people, you need a coach. But the way that I look at it is that, you know, I've, I find that the, yes, the investment is going to be different between a coach and a mentor, because you're paying for the, the, the expertise, the experience, the, the strategy, and the fact that that person has already done what you're doing and they're essentially giving you the roadmap there. I love it. Can, can I ask a strange question? Uh, yeah. Are you hearing music playing anywhere? Yes. I, um, would you mind stopping the sound share? I think I'm hearing hooked on a feeling coming in, it might be coming over the Zoom. I, it, was, it was very faint and very quiet. Yeah. You know? Okay. Just making sure I'm not going insane. So, <laughs> so, uh, Lisa, will you stop your, it says you're sharing computer sound. Will you, will you stop the, the share, the share on the sound? There we go. Uh, all right, cool. I was like, I don't know where that's coming from. Jess. <laughs> but as you were talking, I'm hearing, <laughs> I'm hearing that's very bizarre. All right. Um, I'm just going to share my screen for a minute. Cause it still says you're sharing sound there. I don't, and I'm going to just going to make it stop here by sharing the screen for just a second and that will stop it. All right, cool. All right, we should be good now. Cool. Um, so question now for you. I got so many questions. There's no way we're going to get through all of these in 30 minutes. Steve, did you have a question you want to ask her, by the way? Um, my, my question that I was thinking about earlier was, how can I contact agents in my area just with a, a non- threatening way to get them to listen about exp now i just came over literally in december 
And well, I've just I'm, been... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause you for a sec, Steve. So yeah. Jess is not with EXP. And so you can ask her opinion on this, but this is a general, just like asking a question about anything related to anything. So um, you can get her take on it though. So, cause she, we have talked about it. I'm, she said, yeah, I'm, 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 so I'm happy. I'm happy to, to give you some insight into it, but yeah, I, yeah I, I'd, I'm love, not, to hear, I'm not I'd love to hear your insight. I just want to make sure Steve knew that like we're, we're clear for the yeah. record that. <laughs> yeah. So, so really with a, trying to get attention from anybody, it doesn't matter if it's clients, doesn't matter if it's agents, the key is to actually understand the main pain, the main pain problem, right? So it's not just like, I think the mistake that most agents make, which Jesse and I've talked about before is like kind of throwing information in front of people when it's not actually, it, you haven't created a relevant connection for them. So the most important thing is to, first of all, interview and fully understand, like do the market research interviews, figure out exactly what, like, what is the pain point that is actually going to lead to whatever it is that you're trying to do, whether it's EXP, whether it's something else that it's going to have them trigger the fact that they have a problem and that they need to find a solution to that problem. Right. So, you know, whatever that is, that needs to be your main message. That's going to break through the noise of what everybody else is doing. What we find is like the biggest mistake that most people who don't have a lot of marketing experience make is that they they try to promote the product as opposed to actually creating the connection between the pro like actually the problem and then the solution. It's not, and, and when we talk about ethical marketing, it's not stabbing someone in the back and then showing them that they have a knife in their back. It's they already have a knife in their back, turning them around and saying, hey look at this thing, doesn't that hurt? And then being able to provide them with a solution. I, I love that. It totally makes sense. Steve, I know Steve had a, he muted himself out because he has his dog, he's, he's silencing okay. his dog at the same time. <laughs> did, did, did that make sense, Steve? Uh, it, it did. It, it made sense. I just had to mute so you no couldn't hear my craziness oh. because I don't have an office to go to yet. So I'll be working out of my house for another month. And whenever my dogs see the mailman or somebody walking outside, they're going to bark. Sorry. That's okay. No, no worries. I love it. All right. So, so I've got another question kind of, kind of related and Steve, we can piggyback on. So, um, is this is someone's asking to see who asked this one? Uh, Amy, Amy is always asking, what are your top three lead gen sources and process to convert? Cause this ties into whether you're talking about, right exposing EXP, talking to buyers and mm -hmm. sellers, mm -hmm. whatever it might be, right? Do you go to general sources or if we're talking buyers and sellers, what do you, what do you look for? Where do you start? It depends who you're targeting, right? And I think a lot of the time this question is I, like, it's a question that I get asked and then I ask it back. Well, who's your ideal client and where do they, where do they live? Like, where do they go online? Right? So people will say, well, should I be doing, should I be using LinkedIn? I don't know. Who are you targeting? Right. And so it's not a matter of like, there's like Facebook, I think for a, like pretty much across the board, you're going to have luck, uh, like a baseline amount of connection and, and results that you're going to get from Facebook. But it really comes down to like, where do these other people live? Are they, you know, if you're, if you're targeting first time buyers and, and like younger, the younger demographic, chances are you should probably be on TikTok. If you're, if you're, you know, if, if you're doing like the upsizer range, then, you know, chances are you should probably be on Facebook and Instagram. If it's purely downsizers, you also have to keep in mind, like, yes, Facebook's going to work really well. Um, but, you know, where are their kids? Like, where are their kids spending time? Because a lot of downsizers, their kids are very involved in the actual downsizing process. It's really just kind of like flipping the question and saying like, okay, I work with urban professionals, then LinkedIn is going to be a really great source for you, right? So it comes down to, are you actually in a situation where you're thinking about where do these people go and not just where do I want to be promoting myself? I love that. Um, if anyone's got questions to piggyback, otherwise I'm going to keep jumping around because I have so many questions to get through. And this one I thought was really interesting also. Um, you've obviously mentored, you, you were a seven figure producer yourself. You've mentored mm -hmm. a lot of them. What mm -hmm. does a daily schedule typically look like for a seven figure producer? Are there any common themes or are they all different? I mean, a daily schedule for a seven figure producer ideally is that they are working for two, three hours a day, not more than that. Um, they have, they're fully leveraged. They have a team that's going to support them and take care of all of the nitty gritty daily stuff. 
Um, they're spending their time on the highest leverage activities. So they're speaking, they're creating content and marketing, they're being pulled into high level decision making stuff. And, you know, maybe they're still taking on listings, maybe they're not. Makes sense. Makes sense to me. I love it. Um, all right. At what point in your career, actually, no, I got a better question. This is from, from, from <laughs> Missy asked, what's the best piece of advice you've ever received from one of your own mentors? Results don't take time. They take courage. But what does that mean for you? It means do the scary thing. I, I've, I, when I first started the listings lab, I had never sold a program. The program was not built and I invested $600,000 into a coach, into a mentor and said, well, I'm going to do it and it's going to work because I don't have any other option. When I first started my real estate business, well, when I first started like my, the team that I, that I started with in the end, um, I had gone and I'd learned pre-construction and I'd worked on site for a builder because I wanted to learn that side of the business. And then, um, I, you know, it, as happens at the time I, I got engaged and I got fired cause I got engaged. It was just one of those things. What it sucks to be a woman sometimes in this business. And so, um, I had to figure out how to start from scratch. I took out a line of credit. I had a wedding to pay for. And, um, I took out a line of credit and I figured it, I figured it out and I went fully digital. Um, and we were at seven figures in six months. So really at the end of the day, I think that people are way too realistic about what they're trying to achieve and how quickly they're trying to achieve it. I think that people are afraid to invest in their businesses and take big, take like bite off big chunks. Um, and I think it's really important that people understand that it doesn't like, it doesn't matter what everyone else is doing. Exponential growth is available to you no matter what, you know, I'm moving for those of you who don't know, I'm moving to the Bahamas in 10 days, um, because I wanted to, and it's just one of those things that like, you could do whatever you want. It's just a matter of like, there's all kinds of things that get in our way in terms of, I can't. I'm so like, I, and I just actually wrote a piece of content about this, like 10 minutes ago while I was sitting in the bathtub. Um, it, basically like I hear all the time right now, oh my gosh, I'm so jealous. Oh my gosh, you're so lucky. I wish I could do something like that. And honestly, like there's nothing that drives me crazier because there's nothing special about me. It's just a matter of the fact that I can do what I, 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 I understand that I can do what I want. And when you have something that you want, you just create everything to move in that direction. It doesn't have to be overly complicated. It's just that people get so overwhelmed with what everyone else is doing and what's realistic and, and things like that. And a lot of the time people make decisions out of fear instead of out of vision. That's a great quote. And I would say, when you say there's nothing special about you, I get what you mean, but I would say there is something special about you because it's that quality that allows you to create your life and go structure what you want to do. But anyone could learn that or anyone could do that is what you're Absolutely. saying. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, my, um, my main mentor, um, this, this shocks people too. So he is 30, maybe 31. Now I started working with him when he was 27 and, um, so again, like people, uh, any other people may have looked at him and thought, well, I'm whatever age I have this many years of experience, you know, but I've, I pay him a tremendous amount of money <laughs> and he's quite young. And, you know, he will say all the time, Jess is speed. So he'll, he and I will be talking about something and he'll know he'll be, he'll, he'll see it. He'll be like, I'm executing literally as we're talking about it. I don't take time to overthink things. If we have an idea, I will literally send a, a note to my team and have them start executing before I'm even, I'm even off the call with them. And, and I think that that is, that is a quality that I try to teach as much as possible. I haven't always been like that. I'm extremely shy. Naturally. I'm very introverted. And at the end of the day, I realized that, you know, all of these qualities that we tend to hide behind, like I still get super nervous when I, if I have to speak on stage in front of a lot of people, it doesn't go away, but it also doesn't mean that I don't do it. 
right? And then the more you do it, the less scary it is, right? So confidence comes from competence. It's not really the other way around. We always hear like, I'm, I'm going to spit out a whole bunch of cliches at you just because I can. Um, like the whole, like confidence comes from competence or, um, you know, confidence isn't the prerequisite. It's the reward, right? Like all of these things come down to, we just need to get over ourselves, right? And all the reasons and all the blockers that we put in front of us and just do the thing. And, you know, I remember when I first started in real estate, like I hated all the things that I was doing. I did it. Then I thought, you know what? I wonder if there's a better way for me to do this. I don't think they're cliche. I'm just, I don't know. I I think there's a reason people need to hear them. And and, and sometimes you hear them six times until something shifts or maybe you're already on that path. So, so now at the risk of going down a rabbit hole and bring me back anybody who has other questions, by the way, Steve or anyone else who's on this, I think Tina joined us. If you guys have live questions, type in the chat box or come off mute. You just said you you like speed. You're you're executing quickly. Um, Does it, does that cause then where you need to go back and like change things, redo it? Do you find things aren't done completely? Cause you're a pretty thorough person. How does that show up in the world for you? Well, the way that I look at it is, is, you know, failure is just, if some, let's say, let's say I do something really quickly and you know, part of it works, part of it doesn't. That's just data. That's, that's exactly what I want is I want to be, because nothing is perfect the first time you do it. Everything requires iteration, which is just all, all businesses. Business is just throwing something out into the world, seeing if it's going to, if it's going to work, pulling it back and refining it. And so if you, if you wait again, I'm going to, I'm going to throw another cliche at you. So perfectionism is just procrastination in a cuter outfit. Right. So nothing is ever going to be perfect the first time you put it out there. Right. And so if you wait until something's perfect, it never it's never going to be perfect. So I'd rather someone takes messy action, throw it out into the world, get the you know, get the data back. Get the information back, refine it throw it out again. Right. So I I think it's so important that people understand that if you move slowly, someone else is going to move faster than you. And then you end up lagging behind, which I think for a lot of reasons is why the real estate industry tends to be so far behind everything, because it we're waiting so often for these big conglomerate organizations to make decisions when, you know, and forgetting the fact that each individual agent is their own business and that individual agent can make a, can make another decision. I love that. And by the way, it's funny that it, I'm assuming you work with a lot of like newer and up and coming agents, but we have three, the three agents on with us today with me, you know, or Steve, Steve, Sean and Tina are all incredibly experienced agents. Like, I actually ro- don't work with a lot of newer agents. Most of the agents that I work with tend to be at least at, at, at least six figures. So our specialty is taking agents from six to seven figures. Interesting. Um, all right. How long does it typically take people? Because this is one of the questions from Matthew mm-hmm. asked. How long does it typically take someone to, to reach seven figures? I mean, let's say they're starting at six figures. Is there a timeline or is it different for everyone? It depends on the person. Um, we've I've seen people, I've seen it take a year, year and a half. Um, and I've seen it take, I mean, I have one person that I'm working with right now who she went from six figures to she's probably going to do 6 million in GCI this year. Um, and that took two years. That's, that's so, pretty impressive. But, but again, there's other people who are going to, you know, be a little bit more, be a little bit slower. Usually if, if someone's at multiple six figures, I will usually say within two years, if decision, decisions are made and action is taken quickly within two years, you can usually hit a seven figure GCI. So walk me through a little of the leverage piece, because there has to be a tremendous, you said earlier, they're working two, three hours a day, high level stuff. There's got to be a lot of leverage that goes into this. And obviously this is not a training that we can get through all of it in one. Give me some high level stuff in the leverage piece that goes into making that shift from six to seven figures. Definitely. So I think the first thing that's really important to keep in mind is that every single human being has a different skill set has different strengths and weaknesses. So there's not like one cookie cutter way, which is what drives me crazy about so many, so many programs and trainings and like, kind of like, this is the only way to, to success. Cause there's no one way to be successful. 
Um, every person is going to need a different structure, a different set of support. Um, like for me, for instance, like I am very, very entrepreneurial, but I am also, we, they call my team calls me the systems breaker. So there are literally things in my business that I don't have passwords to. Like I own the business, but I do not have passwords into certain things that I can't go in and monkey with because I will go in and I'll mess things up and then it'll make their, their jobs more, more difficult. And I have full trust and full, like full comfort in their ability to run things. So it's just one of those things where understanding strengths, weaknesses, um, your zone of genius, really, if you want to use that word, that term, like what is your zone of genius? And then slowly over time, getting everything that's not in your zone of genius off your plate so that you can spend that two, three hours a day only focused in on that zone of genius and everything else is off your plate because that's going to be your highest, you know, the highest and best use of your time. Right. I'm at a point now with the listings lab where I've built the systems, I've built the programs, I've built everything. You know, I'm the visionary of the business. And so I've gotten to a point where I'm now the dancing bear. I'm the voice, the face. I get to like do the things, talk to the people. Clap your symbols, monkey. <laughs> Clap your symbols. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Right. And and then, you know, everything else, I have a team of 16 that are absolutely the most brilliant people at what they do. And I hire people who are, who are better at small individual chunks than I am. I am very good at the big overall picture. Um, and I have people. So if I, if I break a seven figure business down, I would break it into six or seven pillars, which is basically what I just wrote my book on, right? The six pillars to seven figures. And each person, I have someone on my team that specializes and is an absolute genius at each individual pillar. And so they focus in down in on the, the nitty gritty so that I can focus on the big picture and I can drive the vision of the company. I can read books and listen to podcasts and look at other industries and see where things are going and bring those things back into the real estate space so that we remain on the cutting edge of everything that's happening. I love that as a visionary. And by the way, I don't think these things you're saying that you said were cliches. I don't think they are to most of us. Like <laughs> Steve nice warmer on Facebook, he just said perfection is procrastination in a prettier outfit. Was that, is that a jessism or is that something? Cause that's, that one's is gold. He's, I mean, yeah, that's a jessism. All right. That's a good one. Um, and then, uh, let's see here. Zone of genius. Matthew Soto. Love that one. He's watching on Facebook. Um, I will absolutely buy the book. I promise to, but will you tell me what the six pillars are just so I can take notes now and then think about them as I yeah, absolutely. So, so here, let me just, I've got the, the, the book pre-order came out today. Yeah. So we're pretty, we're pretty stoked about that. Um, I, you know, the, the way that it, that way that it breaks down is you've got mindset, sales, lead generation, which can be split into two because we teach only digital lead gen, lead gen. And, and so we've got, we break that into um, organic and paid traffic. Right. So the lead gen portion, even though it's one pillar, kind of gets broken into two. We have team and hiring. What was that one? Team and hiring. Team and hiring. Yeah. And then your operations and systems. Cool. I'm just taking and I think, did I say sales? You did. You said mindset. So sales, mindset, sales, lead gen, mm -hmm. organic and paid, team and mm -hmm. hiring, operations mm -hmm. and systems. Yep. All right. We got about four minutes to the top of the hour. I think you said you have a hard stop, correct? So uh, me? No, I'm I'm good actually. Oh, this I, is not I, the day with the hard stop. That was the other one. Okay, cool. Yeah. We don't have a hard stop. Um, I got a buffer too, so I'm good. So we will we'll wrap this up in a few minutes. We started a few minutes after. So anybody who's on here with us live, do you have a question you want to ask a seven-figure mentor? This is your chance. Otherwise, I'll keep rolling for a few minutes. I'm looking at I got to change view so I can see all of you on the screen. No? Okay, we're good. Going back to the other one. Cool. So last couple of questions then, Jess, because by the way, I love talking to Jess. And thank you for, if Damien is listening, Damien Baden, um, who introduced us long, once upon a time. I appreciate that introduction. Because every time I talk, I'm like, oh, it's so fun. Um, let's see here. Oh, out of all these questions. Which hey, Jess. Can... Yes, go ahead, yeah. Sean. Yeah, um, so uh, I'm, you know, I, so I'm, I'm in the, the six figure thing, you know, mm -hmm. uh, not, not hugely, but you know, a little bit. And, uh, so I, is, is the real, is the first, you know, the biggest 
thing? Is it is it your mindset or is it what you know, like can I do this and and uh, will I do it? It's like how do I do I really think that I can go from six figures to middle middle six figures or seven figures? You know, I, I think in my mind I, I'm like, well, wow, that's such a huge jump, and you obviously can't do it on your own because it's it's just too much. There's too much work there to do on your own. Uh, is it more of a mindset thing than anything else? Um, mindset's definitely a chunk of it. I would say that mindset is something that never goes away, right? It doesn't matter if you're, and I think that we assume that like people like Richard Branson don't work on their mindset. And of course they do, right? I think that it's so important to understand that mindset is an ongoing thing and it's not something that you ever get to say, okay, I've done this. Now I'm going to put this aside. Right. Like you can build out your systems, you can build out your operations, you can hire the right team. And like those are kind of check boxes. Mindset doesn't get to be one of those things. It's something that is kind of an ongoing, constant, you know, constant up level. Um, I think that it's also really important to remember that you can create spirals when it comes to your mindset. Right. So it's really easy to I'll give you an example. And this is not my example. I don't remember where I heard it. But let's say you're in a car and you're wearing a coat like you're wearing a winter coat and it's really really hot and you all like it's the, the minute that you start thinking oh my god I'm really hot that's all you can think about oh my gosh I'm so hot I'm so hot I'm so uncomfortable I need to get this coat off I need to pull over I'm you know and that's a downward spiral the same thing works with mindset where you can create an upward spiral. Everything's happening for me. Oh my gosh, I've built so much momentum. All of the work that I've done in the past is paying off. Right. But again, I think that we sometimes hear these, you know, it's only about the mindset and, you know, mindset is just a piece of the pie. If you don't have the systems and you don't have, you don't have more business than you can even, you know, than, than you can handle, then it doesn't matter how great your mindset, is, your mindset is, and you're in this huge, you know, place of abundance, you don't actually have the, 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 the strategy and you don't have the system set up to back it up. So mindset is one of those things that like, yes, absolutely all day, every day, there's, there's a, there's that mindset piece that's always going to be in the back of your head, but it has to be backed up by actual tangible things that you're creating in your business that are going to create scalability. And, you know, one of the biggest things that is going to make a difference to go from six to seven figures is to stop doing everything manually. Right. We hear all the time. OK, you know what got you here won't get you there. But it's even more so when it comes to real estate, when you scale, because a lot of the things that we're taught to do to get to six figures, they're manual things. And if, you know, I'll say to someone, OK, so let's say that you're prospecting three hours a day and you want to double your business. Do you have the time, energy and bandwidth to prospect six hours a day? And then on top of that, can you also handle twice as many clients? The answer for most people is going to be no. So something has to change in order for you to actually create something that is scalable. So again, that's why I keep coming back to the systems, the operations, creating automation, you know, looking at the foundations of your business, where it comes from and how it's serviced so that you can actually create more with less time. I love that answer. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> it's good. All right. So, so I'm going to, we've, if we got one extra, two extra minutes here, Jess, I want to see how you address this because you kind of did, but if you want to go a little deeper, yes. Steve just, Steve just put something really interesting in the chat box. This might be a good way to tie this all together. And then before we do this last question, let us know so we can put it in the Facebook post, in the, the recording, the, the show notes, how do they order your book? And if they want to learn more about your coaching programs, all this stuff, where should we send them to? to which is there just a main? Oh, website? Yeah. So, so my book, this literally, I got this link literally an hour ago. So I'll throw it in the chat. Cool. This is just the Kindle version. The soft cover version will be coming out in the next couple of days, I'm hoping. Um, but yeah, like I literally got this an hour ago. I was, super, I had like a little, I did a little dance. Um, awesome. And yeah, so thank you. Awesome. I just dropped it in the Facebook chat. So it's in there as well. We'll put it in the show notes, Lisa, if you want to cut and paste that thing, we will continue promoting it. I'm excited. I will order my coffee. Um, this is the last good question. We'll tie it all together. So Steve asked, he said, I have the mindset of a seven figure right? Seven yep. figure earner, but the systems of a six figure earner, I need to develop bigger, better systems and materials for securing more clients. And, and I agree with his assessment, but, but what would you say to that? How would you address that? It, well, I mean, there's two ways to do it. 
I mean, obviously, you know what my way is going to be. You can try to figure it out yourself or you can find someone who's got it done and just take it, implement it in your business, right? Um, I had this conversation. I did a live stream with one of one of my coaches or one of my mentors in, in my Facebook group a couple, couple months ago. And he said to me, he's like, why would I go out and not hire the best of the best of the best to teach me how to surf? I can go and I can flounder around on a surfboard and I can suck for a while, or I can hire the best person possible who can teach me how to be good faster. And then I actually get more enjoyment out of actually surfing and the learning process isn't so bad. Right. So, you know, I think that a lot of the time too, we tend to reinvent the wheel over and over again. Um, again, this comes back to speed doing everything and trying to figure figure out everything yourself when someone else already has the answers for you seems a little counterintuitive. And, you know, I would rather pay somebody to show me how to do something instead of me having to waste six months trying to figure out what that's going to look like, whether it's us or whether it's someone else, you know, find someone who you feel connected to, who you like their message and who preach or talk about the kind of business that you want Um, And then figure out what those systems are going to look like for you and how they're going to fit into your business. Because again, a lot of the time we get so bogged down with the, I I know where I want to go, but I can't figure out how. And unfortunately we live in a world where the how has been done a million times. It's just a matter of finding those people and doing what they tell you to do. Again, like that's that's kind of why I always say like find a mentor that's done what you want to do. And it's hard. Once you get to a certain level of business, it may become hard for you to find people who have done what you want to do because there's a lot of mediocrity in the real estate space too. And if you want to have a business that is exceptional, you have to find those exceptional people um, in, in the space so that you can, you can learn from them. It's hard to believe you, that you were shy once. Oh my gosh. No, I am shy. I am (laughs) like, you take me to a party and my husband is like, like I go to the end of the grocery store with my husband and I'll be like, we have 10 minutes. Do not make friends. (laughs) <laughs> right? Like, do not make friends today. We ha- we only have 10 minutes. But for me, like, I'm the person who like goes to the party. I can't, I don't like big crowds. I don't like to be around a lot of people. And I'm the one who's like hiding by the cheese. And I'm like, can we go? Like, can we go now? <laughs> right. And, 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 and again, like that's why I've done everything. Everything that I've done has been one to many and highly leveraged and digital because I find being in large groups of people for long periods of time, very, very exhausting. I love it. So interesting guys. Those of you on camera, you agree. That was amazing. This, this afternoon, I put it back in the view so you guys can see it. This, seriously, this is awesome. Um, Steve's giving you a hard time. He said, yeah, he, you really live in Canada. You haven't heard you say a once. Nope. She, she, she never says a, right. That's <laughs> no, I feel like I've sort of, it does come out sometimes, but I feel like I've, been speaking so much that I've trained some of the Canadian out of my. <laughs> well, my my mom's whole side of the family's from Branford and St. Catharines. She was born in Newfoundland. Yeah. yeah. And you can't get a conversation in with any of them without hearing the word A about 30 yeah. times. Yeah. Yeah. No, everyone, when I first started this business, I think my accent was also a little bit more pronounced. And people used to say, Are you from Minnesota? And I'd say, no, but that's interesting that that's what I sound like to you. <laughs> <laughs> that's about as far north as American geography go. Guys, th- thank you for being here, Jess. I will tag you in this post. Um, I will send you the recording. Once it comes up, we'll chop it up, make it some, some fun clips for you also. Cool. If I don't see you before you move to the Bahamas, I'll see you from there. That's I'm so exci- we're yeah. excited for you. Yeah, we're working it all out. I'll see you then. And I already ordered a pre-ordered a copy of your book, by the way. Talk about thank speed. So you. there you go. I appreciate it. Have a good day, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Produced by the Agent Collective Media Network.